Hi everyone, so glad that you're here today. I'm super excited about this. This is my first interview for the Suzanne King Eco Chic site. And who better I thought than to have my first interview with than my own very dear mother. Huh. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm so excited. And and why I chose my mom, not only because she is my mom, but because <laughs> because she lives a very eco friendly life and I thought that, you know, I could learn and hopefully if you're interested in learning some more as well about how to incorporate things that may seem like super hard or over our heads or confusing and complex because they can be you know how we can make it more easy uh, in our day-to-day -day lives to be more eco-conscious you know yeah. my mom has a, a rain barrel she has a garden she's got composting going on and she takes her batteries to the you know, battery store and the list goes on of, of all the great tips so I'm gonna dive in and really find out how she got to be so eco-friendly and um, and how each of us can maybe take a tip or two and, and incorporate in our own lives. So thanks for being here, Mom. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yay, thank Yay. you. We're in her, her in her backyard as well, which is really fun. As you can see, very green. It's been raining a lot here. Yeah, things look good. Yeah. Things look good. Yeah, and we have the rain barrel, which we'll show you in just a second as well, um, among a lot of other great tips. Uh, so I wanted to just uh, not only thank you for for making the time. Yeah, my pleasure. For my first interview too, yeah. so <laughs> which is really fun. Um, and also just learn, I mean really, you've been, as far as I can remember, always super eco-conscious. I think that's where I actually got it from yeah. in many ways. So I kind of want to know what inter what motivates you to be eco-friendly and to, to, to do things that may seem sort of hard or to some people or take a little more inconvenient yeah. or take a yeah. bit more of, of thinking through. Yeah, I think um, I probably developed a love of nature from my dad. You know, he would have me out gardening and we would grow a little radish, a little tiny vegetable garden, you know, every every spring. And uh, we spent a lot of time out in the country. And I think I just learned to love nature and animals. And so I always had that kind of background. Mm -hmm. And then um, as I got older, I think, and I think this is a process, you know, that that you don't have to dive in and do everything all at once. That this is all developed over time for me. That's and, helpful. Yeah, and as I just keep learning yeah. more things I can do, great. That's one more thing. Maybe I could, I could incorporate do, incorporate yeah. to help the planet. And I just feel like we have a responsibility to to take care of our beautiful home. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's such a miraculous yeah. place. So. Uh, we, we need to be good stewards. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. so true. That's so true. Mm -hmm. And so you are a very good steward is what I see every day. And so what, what comes to you mo more easily in terms of being eco-friendly and what is a little bit harder um, for, I, I for think, you? Yeah, I think the easy things are for me are recycling. Mm -hmm. Obviously the city gives us these great giant recycling bins that we can use. Um, we previously had a compost bin out here in our yard, uh, but we don't do that anymore. We now use the city because the city, they provide... Which we live in the city of Austin. And they provide uh, composting bins as well. But if they didn't, I do have a, a simple compost pile that I use. Uh, we don't even have a garbage disposal. I remember reading years ago that uh, using disposals puts a real strain on the on the water system. Oh, okay. And so I we elected when we remodeled this house to not put in a garbage disposal so we have a little composting bucket which we can see later so that's easy for me to do um it's easy for me to buy recycled paper towels mm -hmm. and recycled toilet paper i don't need virgin paper from you know toilet mm -hmm. paper or paper towels i don't use uh, plastic bags anymore of course you know there has been a plastic bag ban here in mm -hmm. austin but even before that, I was using canvas bags, or now I have a great basket that I get a lot of compliments nice, on. That's yeah. a lot of fun. Um, I have seen her basket. It's yeah, really cool. It's, it's really cool. Convenient. It's really it's cool. <laughs> it's, it's even better than a canvas bag because you can get more in it. Yeah. Um, so those kind of things have been easy. Um, I think things that are harder are those things that are less convenient, that are a little bit less, uh, that take a little bit more effort. You know, we recycle our batteries, but we mm -hmm. save them up. Mm -hmm. And then we have to make one trip to the battery store. Because you can't recycle batteries to your recycling. Right. And if They're you throw them in the, in the garbage, in the, it just goes it, to the landfill and it leaches. It leaches. It leaches dangerous chemicals. Um, so we save our batteries. We have a 
canvas bag hanging in the, in the garage where mm -hmm. we put our corks because Whole Foods will recycle your corks for you. And you can't put the cork in the recycling bin either because you... I don't think it... Yeah. I'm not sure that you can. It's a well, you can't recycle process. it and I'm not even sure it can be composted, but... So, so yeah. it's good. You have this knowledge that you know, yeah. but you also take the step. You just throw it in the bag. So it becomes, as you mentioned to me, when I was talking the other day, I said how, you know, the, when I was, we were talking about this interview and, and you said, well, a lot of these things I don't think about too much because they're habits. They're just habits. Which I think is yeah. key. You know, some of the things I read about, you know, the habits that we have are, are the lives that we live. Right. Something like that. Right, right. So right. the fact that you've made it habitual, or, you know, a habit, mm -hmm. good habits is, is makes yeah. it easier for you. So I don't have to think think about it in my daily life but it also heightens my awareness for example when I'm walking the dog uh -huh. we pick up you know if we see a plastic bottle we pick it up and bring it home and recycle it we don't throw it in the trash or you mm -hmm. know that kind of thing it just kind of heightens your awareness a little bit like oh yes I can take this step I can make a difference um, even if it seems like a small in a small way I think when you add up those steps over time and the number of people doing them, they yeah. can have a really big impact. Yeah, and I think that's one of the goals here is really to just inspire so we can continue to build more momentum with each of us taking small steps and some taking big steps and all of us together can just continue to build a positive momentum. And that's exactly. why we're here today. Exactly, yeah. And so, yeah. so you mentioned some of the easier things um, are recycling, um, maybe <clears throat> composting. Composting because it, you know, in our case, the city, but even then, without You've been that, composting for a long we, time in your own garden. Yeah, we had a compost pile. It's not hard to do. Is it? Is it get gross to get in there and move it around? No, and, no? it's really clean stuff. It's not yeah. bad. Yeah. No, 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 no. And we, um, yeah, we throw away one very small bag of trash every week. We have very little trash because we're able to recycle and mm -hmm. compost really pretty much everything we use. That's awesome. With some exceptions, obviously. Sure, but sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I do things like I always, you know, have my <clears throat> cup. my cup mm -hmm. that I take with me. This cup has been all over the world. Wow. Because I can make my tea in it wherever I am, and I can put water in it, and I don't have to rely on a, um, you know, a plastic water bottle right. or a styrofoam cup or a disposable cup from Starbucks or wherever I have so to be. So you use this for your water or coffee or whatever, tea or anything. Whatever. That's smart. Yeah. So I just take it everywhere. Certain water yeah. bottle. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Instead of having it just be a special water bottle, this you can use for coffee, tea, keeps things water. cold, keeps yeah. things hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Do doesn't have to get too fancy then. No. Nice, mm -mm. nice. Mm -hmm. And so, um, <clears throat> talk about what comes easier and what comes harder, and then, um, and then that these are habits that you live. And and so, if somebody were wanting to take some steps and wanting to become more eco friendly, and really they're starting to think of. I want to leave and live a legacy you know, that I'm proud of in terms mm -hmm. of for our planet, mm -hmm. you know, beyond our just coming to going to work and going home. Really want to do something and good for good for Mother Earth. Yeah. What are some What are some What's some advice you would have for people who who want to be more eco friendly? And like you said, you don't have to just jump right in all at once and just you know be composting and have a rain barrel all at once tomorrow, but what are some, what's a piece of advice you would have I, for I our friends just, who are watching? I would just say to just, you know, try to take one step, just one step at a time. If that's, mm -hmm. if that's all you can do. If you haven't been recycling, try to do more of that. If you want to try composting, try to do that. That's fun. Mm -hmm. um, if you can uh, educate yourself, you know, I do a lot of research before I make decisions. For example, the deck we're sitting on is made out of a, material called Trex, which is recycled plastic. And I'll show that. Let's and see wood, if we can And wood that. fibers. And go. it'll probably <laughs> last forever. And it didn't didn't use any trees uh, to produce. So um, so researching and becoming researching knowledgeable. Researching a little bit and understanding. I don't think we understand the impact of our actions or our inaction necessarily. Mm -hmm. You know, so now there's a island of plastic in the Pacific as big as the state of Texas you know, because of our habits over the last few decades. Um, so it kind of becomes out of sight, out of mind a little it, bit. It does. I think unless it, you I think it does. read about it or unless yeah. you become informed. But it can be to the point where it's doom and gloom it, and it's just overwhelming. Exactly. You feel like, this is too much. I can't fix climate change myself. So we, yeah. forget about it. I'm going to exactly. just go buy a plastic bottle. So get your plastic bottle and then recycle it. 
<laughs> when you're in a restaurant, tell them you don't want a straw. Yeah. Um, the little things add up, huh? And, and try not to get overwhelmed. Just do what you can and mm. stay informed. You know, don't don't feel like, as Suzanne said, you have to fix it. We can't fix it necessarily, but we can certainly contribute to the solution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a really nice point to end on, that we can contribute to the solution, and each of us in our own way. You know, I imagine if you're living in an apartment might be kind of hard to compost. Exactly. But you could probably recycle or talk to your building about adding recycling if they don't already. Uh, same with your office buildings, etc. So um, there's a lot of things we can co- incorporate, like yeah. the batteries you mentioned or the plastic bags right. taken to recycling. Right. Or don't use them. Or <laughs> right, right. And and think about what you're throwing away in the trash. You know, there's a, the, our city has a, uh, I can't remember what, hazardous waste so if you have old cans of paint, you don't just throw them in the trash. You take them to the city, and mm-hmm. and they take care of it for you. So they're just so there are a lot of local resources. Yeah. And hopefully, in your <clears throat> city, if you don't live in Austin, hopefully, um, your city has resources like that. I know we have a lot of zero waste goals. Exactly. Um, and so maybe if they don't already, we can have another episode on talking to to your own city council and and getting folks involved um, to help your city have those kinds of resources too. So that can be a whole other episode. Yeah. <laughs> well, great. Well, we're going to take a little tour and see some of the cool things my mom has around her house to make it really easy for her to be eco-friendly. So let's get going. <laughs> so this is our Dr. Pepper barrel um, water. What are they called? Uh, rain barrel. Rain barrel. <laughs> <laughs> what is this thing what called? This Not thing a Dr. Called? Pepper. Yeah. So we started with this, which is a 55-gallon... Um, rain barrel and they put spigots in them for you and then you can just attach a hose. Oh nice. Yeah you, d- you can attach a hose and water and we have this uh, down pipe uh, we bought this flexible oh, from the rain. Uh-huh. to go into the tank and then it just if it gets full it just overflows a little bit which is not a problem. And then we had several of these around the house, and then we graduated to a much bigger model. <laughs> nice. Which is over here. Let's go check it out. And so here you see the professional rain barrel that was installed, and it holds 500 gallons uh, connected with the gutters there and fills up. And my mom waters her beautiful butterfly and bee and hummingbird garden, uh, which is really important for our natural environment and the people who live on our planet. Okay, so now we're in my mom's kitchen, (laughs) which is pretty awesome. And we're gonna check out some tips on just some eco-friendly things you do around the kitchen or that you use. Yeah, yeah. We could start with these countertops. So these countertops are made out of recycled glass, and they are awesome. They're really smooth and cool. Easy to. I, I don't. Clean. I don't remember if they're made locally, but they were purchased locally, so that's fun. Our yeah. floor is bamboo, but it's bamboo is a really soft wood. This is called strand bamboo, which has resin in it, which makes it hard. So it's it stands up to a lot of wear and tear. Nice. So that's great. Yeah. yeah. We got double pane windows on all our windows, and we took out all the carpeting because carpeting just holds on to dirt and um, dust and things and it good to know you know there's nothing to do with the carpet when you're through with it except put it in the landfill and it's not going to disintegrate anytime soon because they're all made out of plastic basically unless that's they're, good to know unless they're wool so yeah so my yeah. mom remodeled her home uh, a while back and so these are things she was able to incorporate um because she's right up on these things so <laughs> now we can yeah, we <laughs> you remodel like, your home you can think about these ideas too like sure. recycled glass and and if and if you're not remodeling home I have some other tips include as my mom mentioned earlier recycled include, paper towels we've got our recycled paper towels really great quality um compostable kitchen trash bags which, now how strong are these because i've heard that sometimes they're not so strong so well i th- i think the problem comes if you put wet things in it okay put, because because they're biodegradable, if you put wet things in these, they will tend to fall apart. Okay. But, but if you, they've held up fine for us for, but again, we don't produce very much trash. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's good to know. Our, here's our little countertop compost bucket yep. that we use instead of a disposal. And when we have something to recycle in the house, we just pull out our recycling side of the trash and put it in there. So very convenient, very easy. The same size as our, actually the recycling is a little bit bigger. 
Nice. Yeah. And always, you're always using cloth and for always napkins, like cloth. around for whenever we have dinner or any yeah. meal, it's always We always use cloth. cloth napkins. You can buy these pure one. They're not expensive. Everybody gets a color. I get keep purple your, or green. Okay. Keep your kidding. color for the week <laughs> and that's your napkin. Um, save it on paper. What else? Oh, all of our bathrooms have um, low flow toilets. We have low flow toilets. We also have a bucket underneath every oh, yeah. shower because when you turn on the water and wait for it to get hot, that water's just going down the drain. So we actually save that water and we put it on our plants or you can use it to flush your toilet or... That's water anything. conservation right there. Yeah. yeah. That's water yeah. conservation. That feels like an extra step, but you've become, it's become so easy for you. Yeah. You we just, just grab the we bucket. Just have a, we have a mop bucket, and, and when we turn on the shower, we put the bucket into the shower, let the water run into it. Oh, while it, it heats up, yep, while and then it move heats it. Up, and then we move it to the side and take our shower, and yeah. it takes several days for it to fill up. And oh, we, okay, and right. We, that makes I sense. mean, but you can empty it anytime you want, mm -hmm. you know, onto your plants or, or into your toilet or whatever you need that water for. Um, and I have a low flow shower on oh, nice. my uh -huh. shower that has a little lever that you can turn it off if you're sudsing up and you don't oh. want the water to run. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. All good tips. All Those good The tips. low flow shower heads, I think, are pretty easy to install. Uh, oh, super easy and very inexpensive. Nice. Yeah. The yeah. inexpensive part is good. I know there's a lot of conversation around it being more expensive versus less expensive to be eco-friendly. So right sure and i think sometimes you have to have the long view on that but i i think ultimately it's less expensive for us to preserve mm -hmm. water and, and resources less. and yeah. use less you know and yeah and you can even get into gosh what's my carbon footprint if i drive to the store and buy this or if i get it from amazon you know right. and the truck right. Test to deliver it to me and mm -hmm. you know, just, just thinking about those kind of yeah. things. Yeah, lots of ways to measure these different things. Lots of ways. Lots, lots of different of ways. ways. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll get into that more as well in future episodes as well. Oh, so, here's another thing yeah. to do. Oh, I found these fun things. These are like little uh, shower caps that you can use instead of plastic wrap. I have a roll of plastic wrap I've probably had for 10 years. So I've used very little of it. So I've That's just, impressive. These are in different sizes. I think I got them at my local food co-op. You just pop them over the bowl or the dish. Nice. Um, I try not to use plastic containers. You don't uh -huh. ever want to heat things up in plastic because um, of the hormone disruptors. So you can get these wonderful glass sets of um, containers for your mm -hmm. food storage. I think I've gotten all those on Groupon. Oh, nice. For a really good price. Nice. Yeah. Groupon. Groupon. Groupon is awesome. Discounts. We save our batteries. We just put them in a bag which we keep in the garage. So easy as that. You can just easy put your batteries aside and then take them to the local battery store and That's they'll right. take care of them for you. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. These are good tips. Yeah. These oh, are really helpful. Well, come out to the front yard. I'll show you what we did. When we moved in, this was all grass and it wasn't doing very well because it's very, very, very hot. And um, I just decided I can't in good conscience put drinking water when we're in the middle of a drought on grass to keep it green so mm -hmm. we elected to have all the grass pulled up and we've got mulch and we this, have glass here and this is recycled glass instead of gravel and that's all xeriscaping and xeriscaping is basically native plants that are drought resistant Correct. Yeah. and that's zero is x-e-r-i xeriscape not zero escape. <laughs> so all these great plants that don't require much water. Hummingbird and butterfly. And, and it attracts hummingbirds and butterflies. Yeah. Gotta love that. Mm -hmm. Especially in these Texas droughts, during these Texas heat, yeah. heat filled summers and droughts. Anything that doesn't require much water is a lifesaver. Well, <laughs> I'm so excited that we got to visit my mom's house today with you, our dear friends who are interested in becoming more eco-friendly and uh, raising our eco-consciousness. So thanks for visiting with oh, me today thank and you. This all is of great. our friends out there. And um, I guess the last question uh, would be, what is your greatest hope for our beautiful planet? I think my greatest hope is that we can all wake up to how beautiful this planet is and how precious and fragile she is and that we can all be inspired on a daily basis to 
engage in small practices, whatever they might be, that would support the planet. Nice. That sounds doable. Small practices each day. That sounds really good. You can do it. Yay! <laughs> That's inspiring. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. Thank you. Mwah. Love you. Love you too. Oh. Oh. Bodie Bear loves us too. <laughs> so thanks again for watching. And um, as always, we're here to help and try and just raise our awareness and continue to inspire each other in ways that we can be more eco friendly and eco chic. Uh, and live a legacy that we're truly proud of. So thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Hi friends, thanks for watching. This is Suzanne King here and hope you were able to gain some great tips and insights on living an eco-friendly life, things you can incorporate, things you can share with others, tell folks about, companies about that you wanna see them doing, services and products that will help you uh, be more eco-friendly from recycled glass countertops and composting to zero scape with recycled glass and native plants and drought resistant uh, greenery as well as well as a lot of other things that hopefully you you learned from my dear mama and i hope that you watch the next video too if you have any questions or comments feel free to let us know in the comments below as always, I hope you have a wonderful day and I know we're all striving to be more eco-friendly and you're well on your way. It's not about being perfect, it's about doing little things each day and, and really living in the mode of encouragement and building on positive momentum. So keep going, you're doing great and keep inspiring others to do great as well for our beautiful planet. Thanks for watching, take care, bye-bye.